My name's Ace Got Talk. I'm a TV and radio presenter. I'm an urban motivational speaker. I'm also the winner of the World Motivational Speaker Competition 2019. Welcome to the Love Zone. Shout out to everybody at MediaNet TV. Joining me, making her debut appearance in the studio. I'm really excited to be having with me an inspirational motivational speaker, a female empower this young lady has flown around the world inspiring women to be more than the sum of their current circumstances ladies and gentlemen introducing to medianet tv the love zone yvonne michelle thank you so much for that wonderful introduction ace i'm really privileged to be here and what a journey, what a journey we've had mm -hmm. from being interviewed on your show yep. and now here presenting this amazing show, yep. The Love Zone. So, Ace, on my days, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited. I'm so excited as well. And I just want to thank, thank all the listeners that have joined in. So many women have contacted me all week saying to me, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about the show. So shout out to everybody that's been following me and Michelle's journey, Ace Got Talk and Fubi Show. I've done a, we've done a three-part series last week where we started to speak about the language of love. And it just snowballed and took on a life of its own. Do you just want to tell the listeners a little bit about that, Michelle? Sure. I mean, as we as we went through the languages of love, we started off with um, words of affirmation. So there are five main, well, let me repeat, let me do this again. There are six. There used to be five main languages of love, but now there is six. So we started off with words of affirmation. And basically that just, it means that the person who is in rec receiving the love likes powerful words of affirmation. Things like, you look lovely today, or oh, I, I really love you, and those kinds of things. And that helps to build them and that makes them know that their partner loves them. It's what they need to make them feel good. So love languages, it's not about, when we're thinking about love languages, I want us to think about the language of our partner, what the language is that they need to receive. It's very important for us to know our love language, but it's also equally important to know what your partner's love language is. So we went with words of affirmation was the first one. Absolutely, because you can fancy somebody and be sexually attracted to that person uh -huh. and it could be chemistry there but yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean you speak the same language when it comes to love and i think when we talk about love language we're talking about how we communicate our feelings and our affections absolutely so number one is affirmations number one affirmations number two is gifts gifts yeah now this one everyone thinks oh that <laughs> if it's a woman she's money grabbing uh -huh. she just want things uh -huh. you know but Gifts is more about if you see something that reminds you of the person, that you pick it up. You say, oh, babes, I saw this. I saw this. It reminded me of you. Or, or it could just be that for no reason at all, you just buy your partner uh, a bouquet of flowers or you see something like a, an aftershave, maybe like I'm not going to endorse any aftershave, I'm going to say, but maybe like Million, because one of my clients, her partner likes Million. Yeah. And so she bought him that for no reason, and he was just over the moon. Yeah. And so it, the way that he reciprocates that is in the way that she would need it. So it's all about us knowing what our partner's language is to get to get on better. Brilliant, and I think it's, we, we covered this over the live TV link ups, but the love language, it's not just about sexual relationships. Oh no. That the language of love, these mm -hmm. five slash six points that we're gonna cover, 
you could take this information and you can transfer it into any different area of life where you where you got to communicate people with people, right? Absolutely. The language of love is about language. It's about relationship. So it, I don't want us to kind of get sidetracked into romantic relationships. This can work with your children, your siblings, whoever that you're close to, even in uh, even really at work, you can still find out how to get around your boss if you know the way that they like to be communicated to, right? That's the point. It's all about communication. Communication is the key to this. Key to successful relationship, friendships, partnerships. Definitely, but not just communication, because we're communicating right now, mm -hmm. but it's communicating in a way that's understood. Oh, yes. Because sometimes, and this is where we go back to the language of love is, especially in relationships, I've felt, I've fallen victim to this myself, unfortunately, is that you can be in a relationship someone mm -hmm. with someone and they can be communicating how they feel, but the other person's not necessarily re re reciprocate, reciprocating the information. Yeah. So st step one is communication, mm -hmm. but step one is being able to translate that information. And I can honestly say, since me and you started having these conversations about language of love, mm -hmm. I know so many people that is taking the this model and applying it to their own relationships and understanding their partners better. Absolutely. I mean, I had one, one client come and say, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in it. And I said, OK, that's fine, because this is not about belief. This is about language. That's right. You know, it's not about whether you believe it works or not. It's about the language and whether or not you want to enhance the relationship that you have with the person that you're with. And he then said, and then I, I gave him a synopsis and I gave him an example of another client and how well they're doing. And then he said, OK, where can I take the test? You know? And it was it was as quick as that. Where can I take the test? And we will leave a link for you to do a test. It will be in the link in the YouTube link so you can do your own test, your, your own language of love. Brilliant. And it's funny um, you mentioned the test because last week I looked at the languages and oh, it's funny, a few women asked me, they go, Ace, what's your language of love? What's your language of love? And just me looking at myself, honestly, I said, I'm definitely quality time. Oh, you're revealing the. Yeah, number three. I'm QT, yeah. you're right, I'm quality time. And then I'd done the test mm -hmm. after. Yeah examining myself and it came out I was QT quality right. time quality so the time. test is quite accurate and a few of my um, female friends I pinged it around to them I was like do this and it was actually quite accurate in regards to the results so yeah we're going to leave a link in the comments below and if anyone wants to tr try the test out for themselves tell us your results tell us tell us what you think you know so number so number one language of love is affirmation mm -hmm. and by the way over the next six weeks we're going to we're going to drill down into these a lot yeah. more today is an overview because where we left the telephone link ups was on number number five going on to six so those That's that have been right. following the journey they're really eager to hear what number six is today so but we will we will go back over so number one is affirmations mm -hmm. and number two is gifts yeah now ace got talk you know me i'm i'm, I'm unscripted yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah none of this is scripted None. i'm a freestyler so what i'm about to do right now the sister doesn't know that i'm about to do it right <laughs> get down on one knee right that's a bit early eh? <laughs> right right so, that's, so, that's, so, love so, in love language you call that keen but i will do i'm talking about gifts right and i believe in starting as we mean to go so i've got mm -hmm. your little gift Oh, bless yeah. you. And I even tried to understand your language. Remember last night I called you, I was like, you like chocolates? <laughs> you, eat, you, you eat chocolates? Like, and I was like, like no, no. I'm not a chocolate girl. But you did yeah. tell me that you like Prosecco. Oh, bless so I got you. your little bottle of Prosecco. Thank you. There you go, my darling. Thank you so, so much. It's one of my favourites, guys. There you go. So, yeah. love languages. Gifts. I'll put it up there. Let me see the thing. Okay. <laughs> I know we don't want to endorse no brands. <laughs> well, yeah. do you know what? If you'd like us to endorse you, <laughs> oh, yeah. do contact us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Br Br this is a serious thing. Brilliant. So, number three. Love languages, number three. Well, you, men you mentioned QT. QT, quality Which time. Quality time. Yes. Now, this is a for me this is a big one there's two in there major ones i think quality time is one of those mm -hmm. and you'll find that many people i actually learned about my daughter um we were looking at the languages of love because i've been doing it with everybody mm -hmm. and you know i was saying to my daughter what is your language of love 
Mm -hmm. and um, we were trying to figure it out. She did the test and quality time mm -hmm. is. And now I understand because I'm a busy mum mm -hmm. and I do lots of things. Sometimes I get engrossed in business mm -hmm. and stuff that I do because I'm a businesswoman. And so I might be on my phone and she might be asking me a question. So for her is put my phone down, mm -hmm. give her my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. And then she's happy. Then she knows that I'm I'm showing her the love language that she needs to feel appreciated, to feel that she's heard, to feel that she's adored, to feel that she's loved. So again, it's not just about partnerships. It is about you know romantic partnerships. It is about the language of love with everybody that you're in close proximity with. Mm -hmm. So for my daughter, quality time like yourself is so Definitely. important. So the next one. Number four. <laughs> oh, yes. Another big one. And that one is the, the oh, my gosh. Touch, touch. No, that's number, not. The, number five. Number, <laughs> that's, that's number five. We've got, so, so, so again, affirmations. Affirmations, gifts, gifts quality, quality time, time, and... Oh my God, I can't believe. You see, this is live TV. This is what happens, let's, right? Let's go to um, five, which is touch. Yes. Tell touch, us about touch. Touch. Now, touch is the one that I have most men talk about. I don't know why, but most men say that this is the language they want to receive. Mm -hmm. But if you are with somebody who is their touch is their main language, mm. that means that just a, a pat, it's not about a sexual act. Mm. It's not. It's just about that touch, that connection. Yeah. That Some people are quite clingy. Like if you're on the sofa, they want to be, you know, under your arm or leaning on you or they're quite touchy in that way, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and not necessarily really um sexualizing touch but just clingy touchy close to you holding hands that kind of thing yeah? Yeah, yeah absolutely so the touch you know and it is really important to to stress that because some people have said in the past that oh he's needy he's, he's he, you know or he's always touching i can't get anything done because he's touching or she's touching and i just want to do what i need to do mm -hmm. so it's really important that those of you who are with partners who do like touch it's really important that you understand because to that person, if you are always saying, oh, I've just got this to do and can you not touch me? And, and if you watch my body language, I'm not even, the person's over here, so I'm pushing that person away. I'm not even engaging with that person. They feel rejected. But, but once again, it goes back to what we said about the love languages is that if you're um, say man and woman, woman and man, and one person is very touchy and the other person isn't, when you start to understand that the other person's love language and you just understand that they're not a touchy person, some people just like them to be us. Some people just like, if they're sitting, they just want their space. They just want to, they don't want no one leaning on them. And so but by understanding the other person's language, it makes you then, okay, well, maybe I, I shouldn't feel rejected. Maybe this person is just not very touchy-feely. Yes. It, it can work though, but what that way, but what I would suggest is that learning that language is to say, okay, my language is this, and I, I don't really like the touchy feely, but I do like this. So with each partner, it's one hand wash the other. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you are then in the position where you're giving, mm -hmm. they're taking, yeah. and then they're giving yeah. and you're taking. Definitely. And that's how we balance or create harmony. One hundred percent. In a in a relationship. One hundred percent. And so so for me, touch touch is for a lot of clients, touch is an awkward one because it can be seen as so once you start having that conversation mm. then you can then start to elaborate and then start to get together and learn how each other love brilliant 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 number four acts of service oh yes the big one the big one the big one because that can be interpreted <laughs> in so many different ways yeah. and it also can be taken for granted <laughs> It can. So just break down what, what acts of service looks like. So acts of service is a person who is a show me person. So let me be honest. I am an acts of service person. So that means that I would rather you help me, show me you love me. Don't tell me 
And I know that there are many of you listening and thinking, yeah, 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 I'm like that. Don't tell me that you love me. Words of affirmation is not working for me. I want you to show me, show me that you love me. Show me by that you love me by setting a bath for me. If you know I'm coming in from work, and I'm a, I work hard, I'm a grafter. So you know I'm coming in from work, just put a little bubbles in the bath and, oh babes, you, as you walk through the door, oh babes, your bath set. And it's like, oh man. And that instantly sets a completely different tone to the evening. Or it might be the dishes are washed, the bins put out. These things are like, people might be saying, but they should be doing that anyway. They're yeah. normal things. But when you see the person that you love, doing things get up and help because then that person is looking at you thinking look at my babes man he's doing this to help me and that goes a long way so acts of service i say is a big one it is really a big one and there are some people acts of service doesn't really mean anything but if you do the act and do it for that person see what results you get see how your relationship goes better Give it a try. So acts of service. Absolutely brilliant. So we have just done a quick overview. Mm -hmm. and we will be drilling down into those over the few, next couple of weeks of the main five love languages. Mm -hmm. So we've got affirmations. Mm -hmm. We've got gifts. Yep. We've got quality time. Mm -hmm. We've got acts of service. Mm -hmm. And we've also got touchy-feely. So those are the languages that we have identified that a lot of people, even though you could be in relationships for years, you could be married, married for 10 years, kids, but you sometimes, like, you might not have actually stopped to identify each other's love language. Mm. In most cases, that's what happens. And identify if you, you, do you speak the same love language? And if you don't, what does that look like? I've often said, prior to love languages, I've often said that, if before someone should get married, they should have relationship counselling. Mm -hmm. And love languages has just kind of marinated that that conversation for me. Because I always said people, you know, they fall in love with each other, they're attracted to each other, but there's some questions they never there's conversations they never ask. Like, example, I'm vegetarian and you eat meat. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want my kids eating meat. We've never had that conversation. Mm -hmm. I've seen real life situations mm -hmm. like that where people have been together four or five years, and as soon as they got having a baby. There's a, there's a big, big problem because mm -hmm. they never actually communicate. How are we going to raise this child? Mm -hmm. And love languages is, is, is the same that it's part of it. people don't understand each other's love languages. I know I, 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 I spent a lot of time last week looking back at some of my previous relationships and looking back at my love languages and the way I communicate my love and mm -hmm. how my ex-partners, how they communicate love. And I could quickly identify that the relationship was at odds at times, not because we didn't love each other, mm. not because we didn't care for each other, just that we communicated love completely differently. Mm. And I might have been communicating love, but my girlfriend wasn't receiving that. She didn't realize, well, this is how, because you made me laugh earlier when you said, I, I smiled, you see, I smiled, you see, when you said to me, when you said, affirmations ain't doing it for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> show me, show you know, me. And Ace got talk. Sometimes I'm like, I've I've gone hard on the affirmations. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Didn't work though, did it? <laughs> the mark, sweetie. You know? no, but it's show me. So I really I can relate. I can relate to that. Um so do you want to add anything to that before we Yeah, yeah? I mean, I mean it's it's funny that you say that because in, in every relationship. You know, we go through highs and lows. And if you don't know, like you were just saying, mm. you know, mm. if you don't know, yeah. you just don't know. Yeah. So how many of you out there listening have been in a situation where, you know, your partner's coming to you with one thing, but actually in your mind, you're having a completely different conversation and thinking, why can't he be like this? Why can't mm -hmm. he speak mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Why can't he do that? Mm -hmm. But actually it's down to you to speak that, to communicate this is how I want you to love me. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is how I want you to love me. That is the most important yeah. thing, I think, that you be yourself. Yeah. So, you know, I see what you said and how your relationships have gone in the past. And even myself, mm. you know, where I haven't felt, um, I haven't given myself permission to say, actually, you know, you're very kind with words. It's very, very nice of you to say so, 
but actually that's not doing nothing for me. <laughs> get me. Yeah. <laughs> Show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. No, and I love that. I'm laughing at myself because I'm thinking it's got talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if it, if it was a talking thing, we would all win. But um I, I want to highlight this point one more time because I'm a man that's been, I felt victim to this more than once, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to highlight this because, you know, we we want, we want to save someone's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, I think I said to you, yo, we're going to save a few marriages today. You know yes, what I'm saying? We we're we're going to save a few marriages, you know, but seriously, sit down with your partner, do the test, look at your love language, look at her love language, communicate with each other, try and find that understanding in terms of, oh, I communicate like this. I can, I can, and I'll give you an example. I like quality time. Mm -hmm. Not all females like as like. Remember, with with uh, quality time might be seventy percent for me. Mm -hmm. It might be only thirty percent for you. Yeah. So I might want, need to spend a lot more time with you than you need to spend with me. Yeah. It don't mean you don't love me, and it don't mean mm -hmm. say you have another man. No. But it just might you just might need your 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 your, your, your space as. But me understanding that helps me understand the relationship better. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Whereas if I don't understand that, that well, she's not really, you know, it, it, you can start, you know, those little weeds in your thought, your, your, those little weeds in your mind, I call them little weeds, these little thoughts, they start to grow, don't they? They do, and they then do. And then things can get, and then you start to think, what this, but that, and then you start telling yourself stories, and then it just gets out of control. Communication, big one for me. I'm a big communicator. Mm -hmm. And I think that in a relationship, it's important to communicate but it's not only important to communicate, it's, a, it's important to communicate effectively. Yes. Effectively. Yes. Because uh, as a man, we, we, you could be with a woman mm -hmm. and she could be telling you the same thing for years. And I know the word, the N word, the N word, yeah. the N word, say it, say it, say it, <laughs> nagging. Like, it can't be like, why? I'll, 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 I'll nag me so. And all it is is that she's telling you something, but it's not being reciprocated. Mm -hmm. So it feels like nagging now. Yeah. And it's it's just two people that have a, a message that's being communicated, but it's not getting through. It's like that. Yeah. That's it. This is the language and it's hitting a brick wall. Yeah. But we need to come like this. Like this is how we need to, so we can hear each other. And it is about taking that time to actually listen. Actually, what are they saying? Yeah. See beyond what you hear as nagging, see beyond that, hear beyond that, mm -hmm. and then start to unpick what they actually say. You you never pick up your socks, you never do this, you never do that, you never do the other. And guys, when we're talking, we always seem to look at what's not happening rather than what is happening. But those of you who are listening on the receiving end, it's like, so what is she really saying? What is he really saying behind that? Yeah. And that is acts of service can you just pick up your things yeah you know off the floor yeah. because it would be helpful to me because if you don't pick it up that means i've got to do it because i don't like mess do you see do you see that but yeah. from mum saying you know pick you don't pick up your shoes you know your shoes is over here your socks is over here the drawers is over here this is over there you're hearing the nagging yeah but here beyond that go behind what they're saying yeah and pick that up Definitely. Um, I'm going to give the audience a an example of that, right? Because I, I I like using real life examples. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody. Um, shout out to Lucia who's just mentioned saying um brilliant discussion. And guys, keep the comments coming. If you've got any questions for myself or Yvonne, send your questions in, and we will endeavour to uh, answer them. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Yeah, it's got talk. You know they always um run jokes here and talk about. Well, everyone's got a skeleton in their closet, yeah? Or two. Right. You know what? Open my closet in there because the skeleton's just going to fall out on me. Do you know what I mean? Why well, you put them in there? But I want to use myself as examples because I think real life examples are the best ones to go by. Yeah. So I had a female friend of mine call me up during the week, right? And she got really upset with me, right? Just a friend, yeah? But she phoned me up and she was vexed. She goes to me. She goes, Ace, I'm so pissed off with you. No, sure. You really pissed you really peed me off yesterday. You really peed me off yesterday. So I said to her, pause. How dare you accuse me of annoying you yesterday? We didn't even speak. <laughs> How could I have upset you if I didn't even communicate with you? So I was so vexed. I called you up, didn't I? Yeah. I said, Ivan, I said, imagine my friend just get upset with me and I didn't even speak to her yesterday. And what did you say to me? You were supposed to speak to her yesterday. She wanted you to speak to her. And I went like this. 
Oh, so why she never just said something like the first place? <laughs> but she did, but she used a negative language. Yeah. Thinking that you would be able to understand what she was trying to say to you. Yeah. And so when you said it to me, because I'm not involved, so I'm looking in from the third person, looking from the outside, quite clearly I can see, well, actually, she just wanted to hear from you. And because she didn't hear from you, she was upset with you. But you're supposed to know that. Exactly. How am I? I didn't speak to you yesterday. You're upset with me. Hi, how are you? I'm upset. Why are you upset? Because we never spoke. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mad one. But I think we've left the listeners, in their, we've left them in their misery mm -hmm. for, a, for a long enough time, haven't we? Yeah. Right? And I know those that have been following us for the last week or two, they're dying to hear love language number six. So number six. Number six. Number six, guys, is distance. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! This one is a tough one. This one is one where you have to know who you are. You have to be so secure. Power. That's a to, powerful one. Yeah, to be with somebody who whose love language is distance. Because it goes against the grain. That's powerful. It really does. That's powerful. It's mm. powerful. It's powerful. It's mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting a few, I'm getting a few, I'm getting a few <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> yes. Distance. 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 Break it down, sister. So distance. So imagine you are the person who is receiving love. But let's give a scenario, because I think this is quite a typical one, especially in this day and age, when people are uh, have, having relationships that are broken down, they're going into second, third, big time marriages and things like that. And they're used to being on their own. Right? Brilliant. Now, see, Brilliant. Brilliant. You see, this Brilliant. one here... I could just make myself comfortable in the I, I chair. I think better, you know, because... <laughs> because this is one that I have thought about. I didn't realise it was a love language. This is dangerous but it's territory. it's one I wow. thought about. This is big. This it is. is. This, is, it this is. is a big, 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 big area now. Big yeah, area. We could right. do all four or five shows on this one I don't alone. think we... I don't think we... I've got to finish this one. Yeah, tell me, and have a car. Some, and I want you to go into it, but something you broke... If we just... You touched on something deep. We're talking about distance. And we're not talking about distances in long distance relationships. No. We're talking about people that are in committed relationships but like their distance and their space. That's right. And you gave a very good example when you made reference to, I'll make it in my own way, but I'll, I'll do it slightly different from how you made it, but you made reference to people that are going into their third or fourth relationship um, mm -hmm. but been uh, by themselves for a long, a long period time. of time. Mm -hmm. Well, I've lived by myself. I've lived with females. I've lived mm -hmm. with you know the mother of my children, etc. Mm -hmm. But I've also lived by myself. And me love my space. I love my space. Mm -hmm. And as much as I love female company and I love companionship and all what goes with that, I also like my space. Right. Do you understand? I like my distance. I like my... And mm -hmm. even a lot of people think I'm an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And they don't realise that on the other side... Really? <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't realise on the other side, I'm an introvert. Right. As much as I can be loud and, you know, it's got talk. That's why I like to be quiet and just chill. In fact, all the way up here, I meditated. It was just a quiet thing. No nice, no, no. So, but this distance thing, how do you bring, how do you be your authentic self? Mm -hmm. How do you be your authentic self, but still compromise enough to give the other person what they want when it comes to distance? I say this. It's a hard one. It really is to, to find that compromise because you have to find somebody that really is not really into quality time as, as deep as that. If they are, then you've got to kind of work out if those two scenarios, because they're opposites, right? So if you have quality time and you've got distance, then I would suggest, this is what I would suggest, is you come together, you talk and you come to an agreement. This is what this means. So I can I can be away. For me, my ideal person really is somebody that works and has the opportunity to work away from home. That's for me. I, in my head, I haven't experienced this, by the way, but in my head, this would be perfect for me. Somebody that works away, but not too long, but then they come home. So, so I have my space, they have their space, and when they come together, then we come together and then that's where the quality time, acts of service, all those kinds of things come together. But I think this one is one where you really have to communicate. You really, really, really have to communicate on a level. Can I come in there? 
Mm. You mentioned quality time and distance not going together. Mm -hmm. I disagree with you. Okay. And that's okay. That's you know, fine. That, because you can have, remember I said quality time is not all the time. Mm -hmm. So you might see somebody only once a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got six days of distance and you come together on that, that seventh day and you have that quality time. Mm -hmm. So quality time and distance, if someone's love language is quality time and someone's love language is distance, those two things can still work very well. Mm -hmm. They can. However, it changes when the dynamics of the relationship change. So when they are now in a partnership, when they are now living together, so we're no longer living here and living there. We've come in together. So you have to come to some kind of compromise. You really do. And understanding in that situation, because the person who needs the distance is going to, and if the person wants quality time all the time, mm. that's going to cause the nagging situation. It's going to cause other issues within the relationship. So it is vital that they come and they talk and say, right, this is how this will work for me. And this is, and the other person said, this is how it could work for me. And, get some kind of balance in the middle. I'm not saying the relationship can't work because it can, but this takes communication and understanding as you brought out in the beginning, as do all, but because they are kind of opposites, they are kind of opposites, it's vital. If you want that relationship to work, then it is important that you start to communicate on a higher level. Interesting. So would you care to break down the definition of distance a bit more? So distance, yeah. So you're living with a partner maybe and that partner say for instance let's let's go here say for instance you are with an, an older person and they've now gone to university they're deciding to change their their um, career path and so they've got to do all these dissertations they've got to do all this work and you are coming in and you you just want to be on them and you you know you want to have some fun but they need to focus on what they're doing and they need that time so 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 hear the conversation hear someone say to you babes would you mind going and staying with your brother for a week or two because you you know you're really getting on my nerves because this is how we speak guys if we're honest this is how we speak so babes can you go and stay with your brother for a week or so? Because I need to do my work and I need to focus and this. So from the other side now, say they're saying, say they're saying, well, babes, you know, I just want to spend time with you. I've missed you. You know, you're always doing your work. You never have no time for me. These are the conversations that we have. So where we would have the compromise now, where we would talk about distance is that person saying, babes, I really, I really need you to go to your brother wherever for the week because I have this dissertation. But once it's done, then me and you are going to do X, Y, Z, and I'm going to make this for you. I'm going to make that for Can you. Can I just come in there? Ooh. So shout out to um, Lucia who says... Um, she likes her quality time, but she also likes distance. Me too. I'm exactly like that. Love quality time, but I like my space. So I get that. And shout out to Carol Rowling joining us here, um, my darling. Now, Carol says, she says, you can, you can live in the same house as somebody and have distance, but still have your... Um, so, yeah, sorry, you can live in the same house as someone, but still have distance, i.e., like, i.e., hubby might be playing foot, watching football mm -hmm. and she might be upstairs, you know, watching, you know, her box set or something. And I, and I, and I, and I've seen that, um, I've seen that a lot, um, in, 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 in relationships and in marriages that they, couples live in the same house, but the husband might go out and play golf with his mate. So him having, you know, his, his man time and she has her female time. Um, I remember, uh, um, um, last week, Carol Rowling's, when we was talking about the love languages, uh, I can't remember if it was acts of service or gifts, but Carol said that she was the lady who said they get a takeaway mm -hmm. and then they drive home. Oh, yes, yes And they yes. park up on the drive driveway. And her children. and her husband yeah. have that. I think it was a different Carol, but I, I remember that. Quality time. Remember, that was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, sh shout out. Thanks for your interaction and your feedback. Me personally, um, just picking up where, where we left off is, I don't see distance as a bad thing. I think in order to have a healthy relationship and a balanced relationship, it needs to be a bit of both. Mm -hmm. 
and it's like everything, you know, if I reckon any woman, no matter, no matter how beautiful a woman is, no matter how intriguing she is, no matter how much you, you're into her, if you're underneath her all the time, after a while, it's going to get, it's going to wear a bit thin, mm. you know, so it, it's kind of that enjoyment of enjoying somebody, but then kind of just being yourself as well, that, that kind of balance. Mm. So I, that's, distance is a deep one, but I don't think it's a bad one if it's, if it's balanced right. Absolutely. I agree. I agree with you 100%. Because like I said, for me, if I'll go to personal, mm. then it, it would work quite well for me because I'm used to doing what I do. And I live the way I've lived alone for a long time. So I'm used to my own company. I like my own company. I like to come go as a please and do that. I, I love those things. So for some people, it would work really, really well. But again, remember what we talked about? We talked about communication. We talked about, you know, really understanding. And the next thing we need to remember is the mindset. Definitely. We have to remember that mindset and how important that is. So to have the mindset to accept that person for how they are, and that's with any relationship that we are in, we have the first thing we have to do is accept one ourselves and the person that we are with for who we are and for who they are. It's really, really important that we do that. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And not project yourself onto the other person. It's always about being happy and content with who you are as an Absolutely. individual. And that takes some time. Mm. It really does take some time. Some time. I've got a interesting piece I'm going to play on my radio show tomorrow, 1 till 4, A Scott Talk Supreme 99.8 FM. And the piece is going to be entitled How to Marry the Perfect Partner. Okay. Yeah. How do you marry the perfect partner? Who I'm going to ask you again, who is the perfect partner to marry? Well, I think the perfect person to marry is the person who compliments you the most. And when I mean compliments, I don't mean that says, oh, you look nice. I mean, actually compliments you as a person. That and and sometimes it's trial and error to find that person, but I think it's really important to ask the right questions when you meet the person. I, I was a little bit hard on you because that was a trick question. Okay, uh, it's a bit rhetorical, but a Scott talk. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be covering this tomorrow. We'll we'll pick this up in in our conversations over the because this is the love zone. It yeah, it's the love. love it's the love zone, and it's about helping relationships and so not just people that are in relationships that people that are not in relationships that want to get into relationships yes. and I've, I've asked the question but i'm going to give you the answer <laughs> but pause, pause for the drama pause. dramatic effect yeah, you know? I just, like, yeah, like, yeah 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 like, okay. it's got talk yeah how to marry the perfect partner the perfect person for you to marry on this earth is yourself. Mm. It's got talk. Before you consider getting into a relationship with anybody else, the first person you should have a relationship with is yourself. And why you must marry yourself is because you've got to marry yourself for, for better, for worse, mm. for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And when you, I'm going to elaborate on this stuff a lot more tomorrow, and we're going to pick this up over the weeks. But it's got talk, yeah. The first person you should marry is yourself, right? Um, shout out to Carol who says it goes both ways. Time out is a good thing. You love each other more and learn about. Back on the screen, right? Yvonne, yeah. so just picking up on the last point I yeah. made there, I'm um, loving yourself. Yeah. Would, 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 absolutely, would you you're that? absolutely right. It's after you said it, I thought. Oh yeah, <laughs> I just <laughs> thought the question. I, I, you know, when you just hear a question and you're thinking, right, you know, what do the, what does a client, what would you tell a client? But actually, what you're saying is so true. Yeah, you are the first person. Yeah, in your life. Yes, first and foremost. And if you can't love yourself, yep, then how is anyone else going to love, or how are you going to love anyone else? So yeah, the first person you for you to to have a relationship with is yourself yes absolutely 100 percent. and so once you once you develop that relationship and this is what makes the relationships healthy yeah because if you have a healthy relationship with yourself and we're not talking about a selfish relationship here we're talking about a full-on relationship where you know who you are you are grounded and you are aware of everything. You're aware of your surroundings. You're aware of other people. Mm -hmm. So once you have that re that relationship and you accept yourself, there's that word again, the acceptance of yourself, then 
you can then start to look out on other people and like you said you know for better for worse sickness or health you know till death do you part who do you part with you, yeah. you part with yourself first and then others later so therefore it is the most important relationship so I, yeah i agree definitely shout out to hazel jordan um tamari tamare designs um who says ace got talk shout out to stunt legacy who says love yourself first and it's very very important guys that we have self love you, know, you have to love yourself. Um, I often talk, Ace got taught my signature motivational pieces, Eagles and Chickens, and I talk about what happens when you look yourself in the mirror because you've got no one else to validate your self-worth. You've got no mother, no father to validate your self-worth. You've got no friends around you to validate your self-worth and your self-esteem. You know, sometimes the people closest to us are not always the best people to raise our self-esteem. So what do we do in that situation? You've got to look yourself in the mirror. And you've got to put value on yourself. That's why it's about loving yourself. And when you love yourself and you feel 100% comfortable in your own skin, you will then find loving other people and even getting love from other people a lot more easier. I've, 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 I've met so many people that they just want to be in a relationship. I just want to be in a relationship. I just want a man. I just want a man. I just want a man. And that, not being funny, but that, desperation desperation mm. for wanting it so badly is actually pushing it away from you mm. and actually just relax and be happy with who you are and just mm. project your own happiness and that will just draw and channel happiness towards you so the first person you must have a relationship with is yourself mm, definitely absolutely <laughs> so shout out to um Parangor, who says, Yvonne, you look fabulous as always. And yes, you do, my darling. Thank you, you do look Thank you very absolutely much. fabulous. So I, I know we've, we, we, we've got about 10 minutes left on the clock, you know. So um, should we tell the viewers what we've got planned for the next couple of weeks? Should we just hit them up with some of the stuff? Self-worth, self-love and self-respect. Shout out to um, Paragor who says, self-worth. Self-worth, self-love and self-respect is very important. Do you, want to just, yeah. um, do you want to tell the viewers about some of the other shows that we've got coming up? We can, but can I just come in with, yeah. with what Parry yeah. is saying about self-worth, self-love, mm -hmm. self-respect. That self, The self is important. And what we've been raised and how we've been raised is actually not to focus on the self. Um, and we are very much looking for other people to give us those acclamations of, you know, we're great and we can do and we want people to to big us up. We find it we find it very difficult to do that for ourselves. And one of the things that I teach about self-love is that yourself is important. Yourself is worthy. Yourself, you need yourself to move forward in your life. So, you know, as we're talking about love languages, let us not forget that we owe it to ourselves to know about ourselves. So go out and find out about yourself. Do the test. It will help you. And the thing about the test is you can do the test with in a couple. You can do it for your family. You can do it as a single person. And you can do it as somebody that's dating. So find out, know about yourself, love yourself, respect yourself, and move forward with yourself so that you can then connect with somebody else and as a says you know when you're too neat when you're too as as all the time people say when you're too licky licky you see it's it's <laughs> it, it's not attractive it's not attractive sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> are you too licky licky? Yeah. It's not attractive. So for real shit. Right. Shout out to um I think it was Pan Panagoy flashed up quickly. The, the one of the comments came through, it said, shout out to A, I'll just read another one. Shout out to Ace and Yvonne, <laughs> both looking gorgeous this Sunday. Enough love and and blessing. Carol, Carol. Them can look like ES in our socks. Oh, up to them. Them can look like ES in our socks. Look for me, look for me socks. In a me diamond socks and Versace. I was some boy I feel like. It's got took, right? So look on the, look on the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant discussion. Oh, shout out um, Panda there. Um, it's not, um, it's so important to get into a relationship for the right reasons because then the own, the, and, 
because then and only then we will put the work in to make it work. Absolutely, absolutely. I just want to touch on a comment that someone made previously to that. that they said, well, we're talking about love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. They said, the, um, one of the comments came through, he said, I've heard that so many times, love yourself. Mm -hmm. But how do how do you love yourself? So I'm going to put a few comments in there mm. and then you could also add to that. Yeah. So Ace Got Talk, I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for myself. I'm an urban motivational speaker. I'm a confidence builder and I'm, a pa and I'm, and I'm an empowerer. When I talk about loving yourself, what I refer to is loving yourself unconditionally. Warts and all. Ace Got Talk. I can clearly, I can look you the camera in the eye. Look the camera in the eye. Camera, the, uh, camera <laughs> of eye. eye. Camera of eye. I can look the camera straight in the lens with a sincere face and say, I'm not perfect. But I'm me. So when you love yourself, you love yourself unconditionally, you know, and you forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made in the past. You don't, you know, some people are carrying things, you know, mistakes they made 20, 30 years ago, they're carrying it, you know. Forgive yourself, yeah. <laughs> Respect, Carol. <laughs> um, yeah, so loving yourself is, is loving yourself unconditionally. And for me, loving yourself is not, listen carefully, not judging yourself based on the labels that society has put on yourself, on you. Loving yourself is not judging yourself based on who, what the, your friends told you this is who you are. Your family told you this is who you are. Your mother told you this is who you are. Your dad told you, your wife told you this is who you are. That's not, loving yourself is you deciding this is who I am and I'm going to own this, you know, because we, we, we all, um, we've all been through it, you know. We, we, we go into environments that limit us limit us limit our thinking and limit our potential you know so loving yourself is about un, un, unstripping yourself from all those limits yeah and just believing that you are nothing but pure potential and you can be all you can be and nobody nobody on this earth can sit, tell you any different can Everyone. i just come in here of course you can sweetie so i agree with everything that you've said is so important and you've made some really key points i'd like to add for me that Loving yourself is about accepting yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You accept everything about you, even down to the grey hair that comes out of your chin mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. You're right? Accepting yourself um, for, for who and who you are and what you have to give. Right? That's the first thing. The second thing, like you said, is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We carry, as you said, we carry around so much baggage. Um, all things from the past, things that have been said, and we find it so hard to forgive ourselves. Some of us are very quick to forgive others and are so hard and damning on ourselves. But then there are others who can't forgive others and they can't forgive themselves and they're in turmoil. So, and then the, the last thing, is making the making a commitment, a commitment to accepting, loving, and forgiving yourself. The commitment to who you are, the things that you're going to commit to yourself. So, if the person asks, "How? How do you learn to love yourself? How I learn to love myself?" Can I just give them a yeah, tip? Yes, of course you can. Right. So, how I learned to love myself was using mirrors. The mirror for me is very, very key. Mirrors are, are such a powerful tool. And so I would say that I accept myself for, and I would name all the things that yeah. I found difficult. Absolutely brilliant. I accept myself for this. And I talk to myself in the first person. So I say, Yvonne, I accept. And I'm looking in my own eye because yeah. the eyes are the windows of our souls. So, yeah, I agree. Right? And so, Yvonne, you know, I, I accept that I blah, 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 whatever it is. Then I'd move on to the next. Yvonne, I forgive, I forgive you. I forgive you. Yeah, yeah. I forgive you for this. Yeah. I forgive you for that. I forgive you for saying this. Yeah. I forgive you for saying that you are fat. I forgive you for saying that you don't, um, you will never amount to anything because these are the things that we say. Yeah. These are, oh God, oh, I forgive myself for saying that you're ugly. Yeah. Again, these are the yeah. things that people say to themselves. And then the last thing, I commit. 
I commit to building myself up. Mm -hmm. I commit to loving myself. I commit to embracing who I am. I commit, and you go on and on. And I normally say, do seven of each of those, once in the morning, once in the night, and you do it until it becomes a habit. You do it religiously. And after a while, that awkwardness of seeing yourself in the mirror, Mm -hmm. The awkwardness of, of having that conversation with yourself becomes so natural that you start to build yourself up. So as we were talking about earlier about people that need people to, to affirm them, actually you learn to affirm yourself. Mm -hmm. You give yourself power. You take back the power that you were born with, that you left in the bag over in the corner and walked off and left. It actually allows you to go back to that moment of, you know, because sometimes we have to ask ourselves, when did I start saying that about myself? Go back to that moment. Mm -hmm. Go back to that moment. Pick up that bag. Pick up that light and change that story and start to say, actually, I'm worthy. I'm more than enough. I'm more than good enough. I'm all of that and a bag of chips. There's nobody, nobody like you. You are unique. You are a unique creation. There is no one, even if you're a twin, there is nobody the same, exactly the same, that talks, walks, sounds, that does all these things exactly the same as you. So we have to start embracing that. And that's how you start to learn to love yourself. Brilliant. Um, it's going to come in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the comments that are coming in on, on, on the screen. I see them flashing, flashing, flashing through. And I'm going to try and touch on a few of them. But one of the, 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 the key threads that I keep seeing popping up through the comments is investment in yourself. Yes. And it goes, sorry, the word that I said investment in yourself, it actually comes in the same sentence as loving yourself. So I keep seeing these loving yourself means investment loving yourself and i would agree a hundred percent it's about investing in yourself and how do you do that you do it in various ways you do it mentally you do it spiritually and you also do it physically so even down to something like just taking the time out to go to the gym it's a form of loving yourself i'm exercising i'm looking after my body i'm taking good care of myself loving yourself can just be about even just the food that you put into your system yeah. and say, you know, I'm not going to have that burger and chips, you know, I'm going to have mm. something a bit more healthy. So it's just about taking pride in everything that you do, yeah. you know, and even just investing in yourself, loving yourself might be saying, you know what, I worked hard all month. I'm going to book myself in for a massage. I deserve that. I'm going to spend 45 minutes. I'm just going to lie down and get a, a full time massage. It's, it, whatever it means to you, but it's about taking that time out. Like for somebody, it might be treating themselves after a, 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 a long day to a nice cold bear. Mm. And say, you know, I've had a hard day, I've worked hard, I've earned me money, I'm going to treat myself to a bear. Some people, it might be that bar of chocolate, but mm -hmm. it's about taking pride in yourself, you know, and, and enjoying being on this planet, so yeah. to speak. Yvonne? Giving, yourself, giving back to yourself, mm -hmm. I think, is because we have investment, um, and, and that's key because I think that personal development is is very much about the investment that you make in yourself. And so I agree with everything that has been said today, especially when it comes to self-love. I think we can give ourselves, we can give ourselves these things. We can do these things for ourselves. But I think we have to go deeper than, you know, like you were talking about the beer and that you're doing all these things and the massage and stuff like that. Yes, because these are things that make us feel good. Yeah. But we need things that make us think good. Brilliant. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And because everything, the battleground is not outside of us. It's here. It's in our minds. So if we think we are, then we are. Definitely. And if we think we're not, then we're not. So it's about engagement here personally. So how do you think about yourself? What are the things that you say to yourself when you're with yourself, by yourself, and there's no one else around? What are the types of things that you're saying? Mm. This is where you start to realise what self-care, what self-love looks like. Yeah. Because it's by what you say. Yeah. You see this? This mount? Death and life is in the power of it. Yeah, 100%. It's in the power of it. 100%. So it's not so much about what people say about you. It's about what you say about yourself. 100%. And I always, I've got a saying and it goes like this. It says, what other people think and say about you is none of your business. Mm. It's got talk. I'll say it again. And this is all about self-love. Mm. What other people think and say 
about you is none of your business. All that is important is what you think and say about yourself. So it goes exactly in hand with what you're saying, because I told people, I told myself every day, hey, Scott, talk. I'm a king. Come on now. I'm a king. Come on now. You know, and nobody can't take that title from me. And every other title that I give myself, nobody can't take that. The only person that could take that title from myself is me. I said it, hey, Scott, talk. I'm an urban motivational legend. Nobody can't tell, tell me no different. Come me, Cesar. That's you understand? Right. And, it's, and that's about, it's about owning it. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm being comfortable in your skin and earning it. So, yeah, I mean this. Walking it. You know what I mean? It's got to, I'm the baddest. I told him from a long time. The baddest, baddest, baddest TV presenter. Yeah? In the UK. And you see the, my, the baddest female co-host, Dessa. That's you know? right. And we're calling that into existence. You Absolutely. Understand? And we're owning that. Listen me. And the only body that can take that off us is ourself. Nobody, right. nobody can't take, take that title. No one, no because one. that's why if I let what other people say and think about me concern me, mm -hmm. oh my God, do you know where I'd be? Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. Oh, he said that. Oh, do you think that of me? Oh, is that what you think about me? Mm. These are the what people, their words can have you just yep. dear. Something said to you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to go above that. You have to fly above the sky, fly above the clouds, fly above it. And remember this, this is the month of May, Definitely. right? This is the month of multiple manifestation. So the reason why I'm saying this is this, because Ace has just spoken a thing and said, I am a king. That's what you said. Yep. So I want to challenge those who are listening today. What Brilliant. are you saying about, what can you say about yourself that you manifest Brilliant. for yourself? Brilliant. Because the, the kingdom is here. The kingdom has mm -hmm. come. The kingdom has Amen. come. Amen. Amen. And so it is the kingdom has come mm -hmm. so ace has been speaking this it's manifesting it's man this is a whole manifestation right here Street. right Street. because i spoke this as what i spoke this three days before you contacted me to yeah. be a guest on your show yeah yeah and then we did three days of interviews yeah and then on the third day as 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 it rise up we yeah. then started to discuss doing this show so now this is a manifestation of something that was spoken you spoke it in your area mm -hmm. unbeknown to me we didn't know each other and i spoke it and then the universe just intertwine 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 and now we're here so i'm saying to you guys what are you prepared to manifest what can you speak over yourself as a challenge before we come back for next week because next week i want to see it on the screen i manifested this i manifested that i manifest i want to hear what you're doing you know it's yes we're talking about relationships yes we're talking about life we're talking about love what do you want to manifest do you want to manifest a partner manifest it straight and this stuff we will if you want to ask questions and i'm happy to answer all your questions you could drop me an email info at realtalkradio.co.uk. But this stuff is powerful when we start to go into manifestation and the power of your words and the power of manifestation. It's got to, believe it or not, like the sister said, me sitting here on this show is a manifestation. Mm. You know, I started up a you um an Instagram a year ago, an Instagram, and I put on my Instagram a Scott Talk TV presenter. And people were, I was waiting for someone to say, you ain't done no TV, you're no TV presenter. I, Brother, I put it into the universe, mm. and anything I speak will come to pass. Absolutely. So it's very powerful. So I love the fact that the sisters invited you today. She said, Ace said he's a king. What are you going to say about yourself? You know, because whatever you say, if you say it with enough conviction, enough belief, you can manifest it. You can. Shout out to um Carol who says, Yes, big man. Um, big up your um, big up yourself, own it. It's all it's all about ownership. And I just want to put this out there. It's not an arrogant thing, and it's not a uh, sometimes people can mis mis mistake confidence for arrogance, mm. and by no stretch of the blessed is the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. But by, by, amen. So, by, by no stretch of the imagination, am I saying that people should be arrogant? But if you are Hussein Bolt and you know you're the fastest man in the world, you're the fastest man in the world. When you when you start line up on the start line, you're not gonna. Mm, you know, I, I think I can win. Yeah, for own it. I'm the fastest man in the world. And I'm going to beat these guys. So it's the only way we're going to move forward. You know, because sometimes we can be a bit shaky. You know, we like we are. We don't want to be too proud. But I, th I think it's about being proud and saying, you know what, I mean this, mm -hmm. and I'm going to walk in my skin. Yeah. Over to you, sister. Yeah, I, I think I think it's not. I don't think it's about pride. Mm. I think it's about just the knowing, just yeah. knowing who you are. Yeah. And 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 it, you know, knowing who you are, but also knowing whose you are. 
right? And I'm not talking about your your parents, your siblings. It's knowing who you are. You you are a great being on this earth from a from a created source. Yeah. You are a creator too. Mm -hmm. Own that. Mm -hmm. We've been taught so much to suppress a lot of things, Definitely. and this is why we have so much issues in relationships. Definitely. We're too scared to speak Definitely. and say who we are, what we want. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What 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 our love language is. Yeah. We're, we're too scared to say that. We've got to own it. Yeah. If we can own our love language, we've got to own who we are. Definitely. We're going to own who we are. We've got to own what we do. And it goes on and on and on and on. So it is about us, the whole thing. It's the encompassed um, conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. Love languages, you know, who we are. It all kind of comes together. But the one thing I'm going to say about love is that there must be boundaries. 100%. There must be boundaries. And when you are in love and you set no boundaries, that's when you get multiple issues. Boundaries are very, very important. It's not a love language, but it's part of every love language. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So it's not a love language as in like affirmations and touch and all of that, but it's part of each and every one of those love languages. So it's very, very important, vital that you understand how to set boundaries in a loving way. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Shout out to Ruth. Um, think it, say it and believe it. Yeah. yeah. Shout out, shout out to, to Ruth Carter, the Liberty Coach. Guys, thanks for all your comments. If you guys got any questions that you want to drop, um, send to me and Michelle. Just um, drop us a text at info at realtalkradio.co.uk. As of next week, we'll have the MediaNet live official info at um, email address for you guys to send in all your comments. And, you know, if you've got any questions for us, if you want to tell us your love language or, you know, say, well, actually, you've covered six, but there's a seventh one. Tell us. I'm really interested, the guys and the girls. You know, there might be a, a seventh la la language that you might want to add and say, well, I think this is the seventh one. And we'll actually read those out and we can open up the discussions. With those Sister, do you want to, so we're going to tell us, tell the listeners what we've got. We've got some really exciting things planned um, on the relationship love zone show do you want to tell the listeners some of the stuff we've got planned for the next couple of weeks <laughs> i don't want to go too deep into it but what i will say is that we will we'll be having a studio guest in a couple of weeks time um they'll be gracing us with their presence and i'm really really excited about this guest now we know that we've got social distancing so we've got this going on in the studio she so so, she, she's beating around the bush. I'm just going to come out and say, yeah, we're bringing, we're going to have a sex dolly in the studio, yeah. And she's she got the male one. It was one of her mates that lent it to us, right? It was, it was your mate who lent it, isn't it? One of her mates, right? Says, oh, oh, I've got one in my closet. Talk about a seven skeleton skeletons in this closet. These women, they've all got sex dollies in there, the full blow up ones. You know what I mean? So we're going to have um, a dolly in there, and then we're going to be talking about it because, as Yvonne mentioned last week, did you know that? The sale of sex toys has gone up by 70% since this lockdown, yeah? So somebody must be buying the toys, right? And don't make like, don't make it like I'm not you, right? So we're going to be talking, we've got so many top topics we're going to be covering, but one of them is we are going to be talking about blow up dolls. We are going to be talking about toys. We're going to be talking about fetishes, um, bondage, yeah, threesomes. We're even going to start, it's, we're going to have a lot of, we're going to talk about um, mixed, mixed relationships. Yeah, blended um, families, you know, lots and lots of different, it, it, we're covering a range of topics in relationships. Yeah. Because it's, relationships is such a broad subject. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring it to you and we want to discuss it and see how you feel about see, it. See how you feel. So we're going to, you know, we started with the love languages. So we've got the basics of communication and then we're going to open that up. We're just going to talk about absent fathers single parents, except the whole kit and cabot. And if there's anything you want us to talk about, any topic, say, Ace, Yvonne, we want you guys to touch on this topic. What do you think? Drop us a line. You know, we're here to stay. This we're in this for the long run. Ace got talk. And Yvonne, Michelle, TV will never be the same again. S sister, do you want to just um just 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 lead us out? Yeah, I'll summarize, yes. I lead us out. I hope that you've enjoyed the show today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please do remember the email address. It's info at, ace. Info at realtalkradio.co.uk. Just drop us an email. Yeah, that's one more time, that's info at real talk because that's what we are doing around here real talk we are getting the people they want to them info at realtalkradio.co.uk 
Um, and you can join us back here next week, 12 o'clock every week. We'll be streaming for Media Net Live TV on YouTube. You can also find us on Media Net Live TV on Facebook. And you can also find them on Instagram, which is Media Net Live TV. You can also follow myself, A Scott Talk, on YouTube, A Scott Talk. Um, and on Instagram, A Scott Talk. And yourself? You can also follow me on Facebook, uh, Yvonne Michelle. Um, and also Instagram at Yvonne Michelle. And you can f contact me on my website. That's Um, We're all over social media. So do feel free to contact us with your questions, your comments. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for your support and your love. Do remember to share this with your friends, your community and your family. Share, share, share. Get the word out. Let's get talking. Let's get people involved and let's get moving in our relationships. So just before, um, you know, one more comment out there. So we need to start with the truth and honestly in, in black relationships. Yeah, Well done, Yvonne and Ace Brilliant Show. So I think once we start talking about relationships, we're going to open up a lot of can yeah. of words. So oh, yeah. keep, keep the comments coming in. Um, and until next week, you know, um, stay blessed, guys. Have a good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Salute. Ciao for now.